Welcome to Face the Facts. I'm your host, Nick Face, and we welcome you back to another jam-packed sports edition of the show. We have a lot to cover today. We have two teams that are in the hunt in the playoffs. We have a team that has their best start in franchise history to talk about. And then we have a team that just had their NFL draft. Surprise, surprise, the Patriots also on the board for today. We want to kick off the show here. They don't really kick in hockey, but we're going to pass the puck over and talk with Tom for a second. And the excitement is still there from that extremely awesome Game 7 that came out for the Bruins. They got the win and they advanced to the next round against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Only, Overall thoughts? Only, only took three games. <laughs> only took three games. Only <laughs> took three only games. Only took three games. And, Off my life. And, um, yeah. Go ahead. And 10 plus goals. Um, well, just as we had hoped, the Bergeron online finally produced in Game 7. Yes. As we were waiting for that after Game 2, game, the Game 1 and Game 2 explosions by that line. Uh, Jake DeBrusque is now known as Mr. Game 7, apparently. Um, after one game, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> only his first Game 7, only his first career Game 7, and he gets the two goals. Danton Heinen. Scratched in Game Six, comes back in Game Seven, scores his first career playoff goal. Correct. I know, I know, you were you were questionable on that. I was uh, questionable on that. And Rick Nash is still quiet. Like, why, why don't I? I can, can I say one thing about the series? It was a series defined by making sure Tuukka Rask could get out of the series alive. His players <laughs> saved his butt in yeah. Game Seven. I will say that. Um, More before so before I continue sense. first, I didn't introduce Phil Haley. Hello, Phil. How are hey, you? How you doing? Did not, right. di didn't mean to. You're way I'm, yeah, down there. Get just, out of here. I'm just observing. <laughs> I'm just a bystander. Don't mind me. Hey, we know you actually watched the hockey game. I did. I so. watched one. I got, uh, well, not all of like in, in my fashion. I didn't watch all of the game, but when I got in, I got enough ones like, oh, it's, when I was listening on the radio, I thought I was jinxing it because we were up 3-2. Yep. And then like, oh, that was the, the slap shot pretty much at the back of the... High end of Lynette. Yeah, I remember that play. And Correct. And I got into my apartment, and I'm like, oh. Yeah, I just saw the Marshawn get beat, and then uh, just short on a shorthanded goal. That was yeah. the thing that got me, too. I'm like, well, maybe it's not their night. That was one of the goals that I said to myself, is this really going to happen again? Is this really going to happen? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the Bruins were on a power play, and yeah. Toronto just took the puck and put it right there. Uh, me, personally, I wasn't worried. I'm sitting there. They scored. The Says the one that wasn't going to watch Game 7. That was... Uh, yeah, that's that true. I did, I did say it, but the nerves were too high. I had to watch it. Um, and if I didn't watch it, I wouldn't be a true fan. So, Well, it was, wasn't it the first game in the series for Game 7 where the first team that scored actually lost? Game 6 was the first game. Oh, Game 6 was. Boston scored in game first in Game 6. But also for Toronto, they scored first, they scored in, first in, in Game, game seven, 7 as so, well. Yeah, they, okay. Star of the series, who is it? I'd have to give it to Jake DeBrusque. I, I'm in agreement. I'm sitting there on my couch watching, watching the second intermission before third period. I'm sitting there thinking, Jake DeBrusque is either going to score the tying goal or the go-ahead goal. Yep. Heinen scores the tying goal. Who scores the game-winning goal? Game-winning goal. Jake DeBrusque. Jake DeBrusque. So uh, my gut was right. Um I'm glad I watched the game. It was a little nerve-wracking in the second period. First period was weird. Uh, something I'm like that you don't see a lot in hockey, but you definitely see in the first period. Um, and I, they're just rolling right now. Don't discount David Pasternak in the series, though, too. He started out gangbusters, we know. He also got the goal also in Game 7, but I think... Pasternak needs a needs some love there for story another of, star of the series too. Story of the second round is going to be Nikita Kucherov versus David Pasternak. That's yep. like the headline right now. Yep, guaranteed. They have to elevate their game. Yep. Do you see Pasternak stepping it up more, or do you think Kucherov will? I see rise and shine. I see Nikita Kucherov unloading games one and two. They're down in Tampa, and mm -hmm. then bought them. Boston coming back in game three and four and Boston knock on loading. Not saying that Boston's going to go down 2 nothing early in the series. Um, my thought is that they come back to Boston tied 1-1. One, one and one. One. I'm thinking 1-1. One and one. And maybe they win both games in Boston depending on which game they win. I think 
Tampa's had too much rest. I wouldn't be surprised if Boston wins game one and Tampa comes back and wins game two. Yep. Um, but Boston's legs are – the Bruins' legs are still working right now. They're not tired. They're not re- just relaxing. Well, Tampa's back. not in game mode right now, yep. and that can be a big reason why the Bruins may come out more strong and look like the more poised team out on the ice. Look like they're more prepared. Because they've, they're only going to get, what, two games off? They had, they had their game, what, Wednesday night, so Thursday, Friday, set. Yeah, two, ba- two, basically two, two days, days off. off. While Tampa has been sitting for almost a week. A week and a half, Did they probably. sleep? Is that Tampa? No, Tampa won in uh, five games. Five games. Six games. So, yeah, it gives them a little bit more rest. They're probably a little bit more healthy than mm. the Bruins. But I think the Bruins still have that, that amped feeling, in a way, sure. on – getting right back out in the ice, taking care of business. And I, I'm, I'm in the same boat as you. I think they're going to go up 1-0 early in the series, and I think Tampa's going to take game two. That's but my thought. Don't be surprised if Boston takes both game one and game two. No. Nope. Uh, I think DeBrusque's legs are ready to go. He, yep. wants, he wants to get back on that ice and put the puck on his stick. Um, but, I mean, the rest factor was a big question last night in the Vegas-San Jose game. Yeah. And, San Jose was not ready. Not whatsoever. ready for prime time on that game. No mm-hmm. way. In case you didn't know what that score was, that was 7 gold, nothing um, Golden Knights. And that team, we've said it here on the show before, I thought Bruins and, and Golden Knights for the finals. I'd be, I'd be surprised if they didn't win the Cup. I'd be very surprised if they didn't win the Cup. Yep. But the Western Conference Imagine final, that, Phil. This is an expansion yeah, team yeah, for hockey. Know. Imagine an expansion team their first year in. Winning a cup? That's crazy, man. That's absolutely ridiculous. In Vegas, even of think all that. places, too. I know. I was, I was saying so to Phil So many before, legs will be broken. I know they will be. That city's going to go nuts. Yeah. I was saying to Phil before this, uh, I think they're just a bunch of third-line guys that are ready to prove themselves that their teams let let the wrong guys go, and they have talent, and they're ready to win. Yep. They're hungry. So They are hungry. It's a beautiful thing, though. Now, yeah. Love it. the Bruins yeah. get to the next round for round two. We call this what the semifinals, and then the Eastern Conference Finals, and then the fi- and then the you know the big the big games. We can't discount though the struggles that the Bruins did show against Toronto in this series. My first struggle I want to talk about is the coaching matchup between Babcock and Cassidy. My feeling, Babcock outcoached Cassidy until Game Seven. What do you think on that? Well, I mean, it's it's easy to say that Babcock outcoached Cassidy because Cassidy barely even has one playoff uh, experience under his belt. Babcock's been to numerous on, when he was the coach of Detroit. So, I mean, it, it's obviously Babcock's going to outcoach uh, a guy like Cassidy because he has the more experience. experience factor. But, yeah. I mean, when... Nazim Kadri was out for games three and four. It, it, it looked like Babcock was struggling with his matchups even mm-hmm. still, even even with Toronto coming out with the wins. But mm-hmm. um, I, ju- I think Cassidy has more confidence in his guys, which is going to show where there may be some mistakes where it's like, oh, what is he doing? But uh, it's definitely more of a confidence thing for Cassidy than it is an experience thing. So... Now he has the confidence. Now he's won a series. He kind of knows a little bit more about maybe how the game changes in the playoffs. Because it does. It does mm-hmm. change. It's a much faster product. You have to be more crisp with passing. You have to make sure that you're executing to perfection. I think the Bruins, I don't want to say lucky, but they definitely elevated that game in, in Game 7. That third period they had, that's what they needed to do. And they, we need to see more of that against Tampa because it's a better team. Tampa is a much better team. You don't think so against Toronto? What do you think they match up better? Uh, I, think, I think the Bruins match up better against the Lightning versus Toronto. I agree. Because the Bruins have a 4-1, I believe it was 4-1 to in the regular season. 3-1. and, one. Three and, one. Three and Bruins one. won 3 Tampa only won one, and that game they rested a bunch of players. There's a lot of similarities between the two teams in mean, Tampa and uh, Boston. Toronto. Toronto We've had our won. number against Toronto. Yeah. I mean, against Tampa. Excuse me. Toronto, not so much. That's why I was nervous about this series to begin with, because the Bruins had a losing record during the year. They were one in four, one in three, one in three, one in oh. three. They played teams four times, right? 
Is that in, what the, it is? in the division yeah. four times. So mm-hmm. one and three on it. And uh, Anderson on the Bruins was nine and something for a record. Yeah, Anderson. Like nine and two. Well, he was he was the before he went to Toronto. Uh, he was the goalie for the Anaheim Ducks. Yep. Um, and the Bruins struggled against him when he was on the Ducks as well. Big time. Uh, tw- it was like a brick wall in front of the he net. He was a, like even in Game Seven, even like the second period, he was. He he, he didn't look good. Neither goaltender looked good in that game, no. and Raz came out on top because his team knew what they needed to do to win, and Toronto didn't. Until Game 7, I would have said Anderson outplayed Rask. Oh, absolutely. In Games 3, 4, 5, and 6, Anderson Absolutely was stood on his there. head yep. and, and single-handedly got Toronto at least two wins in that series. Absolutely. Yep. Rask, now that's my big concern right here. He did not look right at all this series. Mm. I don't think that I saw a game where I looked at Tucker and said, he's got the puck. I feel confident with him in the net. But I can also, I want to add to that, that the game that Hudobin did jump in on, he didn't look good either. Hudobin? So, yeah. Okay. Hudobin did not look good at all. Um, when did he? Um, he came in game, game five. Five. Yeah. yeah, Rask got pulled in game five. First time since 1995 a goalie has been pulled in the playoffs. Yeah. So, I think it was expected that Kudobin wouldn't be as sharp because he hadn't gone into any games recently. Do the Bruins have to continue to ride Rask? Is Rask is it ride or die with Rask? See how tough it is to say? Sure. I, I think Say the Bruins go down 0-2 in the series and Rask gives up six goals each game or something. Do you have to go to Kadobin? Yep. Exactly. Yeah, at that point, yeah. You, I mean, you, it, it because time. what's the limit on the amount of goals that Rask should let up until something until there is a conversation that's had? That says, okay, that's enough of Rask, Kudobin, you go in. Depends. Depends on how quickly they're giving up. Because I'm looking at three. I think three is my limit. I, well, watch, like last night's game, I was thinking Martin Jones needs to go. They need to put in their backup. I, I even said to myself during the game in game seven, where's Kudobin? Mm-hmm. Where's Kudobin? Because it was already four to three going into the third. On to like 13. It was like something crazy like out of like 13 or 15 shots, right? And that's what we've that's seen for thing, like shot yeah. percentage. It's like 13 out of 18. It's 5 out of 10, you know, going into the net. That's terrible. Yeah. And it's got to be better. So Rask has to get his head cleared because as we know from 2011, the way the Stanley Cup is won is by a hot goaltender. And that's why, well, not – it's it's a big reason why the Bruins won 2011. Yeah, Tim was because Thomas of Tim was Thomas. incredible. He was he stood crazy. on his head. Yeah, and literally. was amazing. He really yeah. did. Literally yeah. stood, he on, stood his on his head, head. <laughs> against one of the one of the greater one-two punches in Vancouver. Yeah, history. That was a yeah. that series was epic. Yeah. an epic epic series. Other concerns about the Bruins right now. We have our positives. We know we have the best first line in hockey. We know that they're looking like they gelled in that game seven that needs to continue over. Looks like Bergeron's okay after sitting out from game four, game five. Which game did he sit out? I think it was game four. I think it was four. I don't see any concerns on the offensive side of the game. What I would do for a change, Donato matches up very well in this Lightning series. So in my eyes, I look at maybe like a Rick Nash gets pulled. Maybe it's um, Heinen gets pulled, something there, because I want Donato on the ice. I want him out there. They need the offense in my eyes. What do you feel? They need the speed. They need the speed. Um, Donato might not have matched up well against Toronto, but this is his series right here. Yeah. No, this is absolutely his uh, because, you know, no pun intended, but the Lightning are lightning fast. Yeah. Um, but not as fast as Toronto. You were waiting for that one, man. Not as fast as Toronto. Toronto's has a lot more youth that are very quick to the puck, and that's why the defense, and I thought, did struggled quite a bit with them. They were too quick for the Bruins. Yeah, they're Old a young timers team. like Chara out there and McAvoy, who's still not himself. They're a young team. Uh, I think. Uh, I, I was I'm, I was more scared against Toronto than I am the Lightning. 
I, I'm sorry to say it, but I am. No, I was. You're not no, in the minority. I, 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 I hope. I, yeah, that's what I I'm mean, we about. said. We said before at the when we did the show at when we uh, did the show at the end of the se- towards the end of the season, the regular season. We said that I said that it would be a better matchup to have a New Jersey or a Philadelphia than a Toronto. Yep. So we all knew. We all knew it was going to be tough. I mean, it did. Didn't look that way in the first two games, but we knew it was going to be tough. I think in the Tampa Bay series, they need to fit Donato in somewhere. They need to get Brian Gianta in this series. I know. Now, what do you do? Who do you pull? Who do you pull? Do you look at the Corrali line? No, keep that line together. Because I think that line's been fine. You so need... then you got to look at the threes and the twos. I think Krejci's name needs to come up here. Because Cre- what is Krejci doing out there? He's he struggled in this round. I think you give him a game in this round, in the next round, to see how he does. I Heine, Heinen makes me a little nervous. Um, I think they need Donato. They need Gianta. You put you take Rick Nash out. You put Gianta in because Gianta has like 15 seasons of playoff experience. Yep, and he. Against the team, I, I mean, they should have done. They should have put him in against Toronto, but I under, I get why they don't. They didn't because he's older and they're they Toronto's faster. I think he's gonna be. He would be a good matchup in the Tampa Bay series. Um, I think Donato, you put in for Heinen. I mean, there's you don't don't split up the Corrali, Shower, and the Chai line because that that line's been doing fantastic. Mm-hmm. They've been getting. They've been keeping the puck in the zone. They've been giving the Bruins, setting up the Bruins for the chances. Their only blemish was they started game seven, and that's when one of the goals got scored. That was the only blemish that they've had. Yep. So, again, that series, it starts Saturday, okay? It, we'll t- we're not going to tell you when we're doing our show, but it starts Saturday. <laughs> April 28th. It starts April 28th. <laughs> then after that, it goes Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then if necessary, we have Sunday and then Tuesday. They go every other day. Every other day. There might be two, two days between the uh, first two games and the game three. And there four. might be. But we at least know that it starts April 28th, Saturday, 3 o'clock. That first game is uh, in Tampa. Uh, yeah. In Tampa. And the Bruins have to come out of game one and two with at least one win. They have to. Otherwise, Otherwise it's, uh, it's going to be an ugly road ahead. But, again, we feel... At least for myself, I feel more confident with the Lightning versus Toronto. So it's, a, again, clean slate, new chapter. Chapter 2 begins on Saturday. Chapter 1 still continues for the Boston Celtics. They are against the Milwaukee Bucks right now. The series is tied three games apiece. The Celtics have had their ups. The Celtics have had their downs. The good news is the Celtics have a game 7, which is Friday night. They're returning back to the Garden. That will be on April 26th, and we are uh, 27th. Excuse me, mm-hmm. and oh, we are no, hoping it's, um, it's Saturday night as well. Actually, uh, Saturday night. Excuse me, the 28th. The 28th, 28th. It is the 28th. Yeah. Excuse me. So you have two. It is Saturday. Games. It is Saturday, eight o'clock <laughs> yeah, at yeah. the Garden. There's so many games going on. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry to confuse you. So that's a game seven at the Garden. Let's look to Phil first. Phil is. Again, yes, our please. NBA, <laughs> our guru over there. Hi, time. Phil. How are you? Nice. <laughs> uh, I've been having taking a vacation over here. I'm talking brewing. What have you seen from this series? What's the positive spin on things? What have you seen oh, I mean, on the I'll, positive I'll, I'll throw it out, uh, all out there. I mean, yeah. I'll, I'll not necessarily be negative, but just I'll throw the criticism of uh, I'm waiting for uh, Morris to, uh, to really come up bigger than he has. On Terrible it. series for him. He's not been having a he's not been having a good one, and they've been no. doing a good job defending him and not allowing it. Like he's actually had more success um, going into the paint yeah. as opposed to his three point shot, which one of his bigger ones. And he hit con- a lot of contested shots before. That's like sure has yeah, and that's his jam. He pressure for him didn't seem like an issue, and I don't think it's pressure now. I think they're just. He's not getting Are the ball. Are they in his head a little bit? I think it's just a ball denial thing. Okay. I think it's just uh, Milwaukee's been really great at denying uh, passing lanes. Yep. Uh, they're very long. Yep. Uh, and also, Chris Middleton just doesn't miss. And he's a great player. I can't stop looking at his teeth because uh-huh. he has like, hey. weird like, teeth. 
Actually, it's not too bad, but it's just like, he looks like a nice guy, a cool guy. I'm sure it'd be, we'd have a great conversation. Like, he just oh, needs I, to close his mouth more, right? I, <laughs> possibly. But, uh, no, but he actually, I, I love him as a player. I love, I like, I've grown to love him as a player. Uh, and I love that I get to hate Eric Bledsoe more because yeah. he's just a, a POS. Yeah. But if he was... Um, See, I, I'm, the, I'm the way, this way with Della Vadova. Oh, I love I love to hate him, and I, I love, love him hating as well. him. Oh, yeah, love hating him. But if they were, if both Bledsoe and Della uh, Del were on our team, we'd love them. Of course, I mean, we would. The, yeah. it's, it's like the Martian with hockey. You'd hate sure. him if he's on another team, and yeah, you love exactly. him when he's with you. But and I was actually worried because I had not seen Della. Uh, he was not in the first couple games. Della he was not. No. And it's like I thought that was a mistake, and then they brought him in. I'm like, okay. But uh, so I guess the positive spin. Uh, Jalen Brown and Tatum, and I actually didn't catch that much of last night's game. Yeah, uh, but from what I've been seeing, there have been uh, shining moments for Tatum. Yeah, Brown has been more apparent, and I even think he needs to uh, go to the basket more. And when he yep. when he does, it opens things up a lot. Al Horford um, continues to be a really incredible bright spot. Mm-hmm. He's he can be a kind of a weird bruiser. Yeah, he plows through people in the paint to yep. allow other people to drive. Yeah, and he also can shoot the three, and he can make some passes. And one of your favorite guys, Marcus Smart. Yep. When he came back in Game Five, I'm not gonna say he won that game, but he was an element of which his presence had to in the with. lineup elevated that game. Yeah. Everybody fed off that energy that he brought, and that's what was I think was a missing part of why the Celtics struggled in three and four. Yeah, and I also think Milwaukee plays really good at home. Yep. Uh, I think Milwaukee is a much better team than their. They're not a seven seed. Uh, they've had a lot of turmoil this year, as you probably heard while watching the series, yep. that their uh, coach wasn't the coach that started the year with. And I think it was like middle of the year, even even later, they switched. Uh, the head coach, I believe, was fired. Yep. And they're still kind of working that out. I th- I'm yep. sure they have it down to a certain way, but in a, in a certain way. But What's the name of their coach? Because he almost doesn't even look like a coach. I he for, look, he looks like a guy that I works forget. for IBM. He could be, he which could would be. be great. He could be moonlighting as a coach. He could very well like, be doing that. He owns a couple Baskin-Robbins franchises and yeah. he's just kind of making his way. <laughs> like, oh, sorry, honey. Oh, I'm coaching again. He's, just, he's, just like, just he's like flavor number 32, that, Phil. Just they like count. the accountant that played for the Chicago Oh, yeah, Black the Blackhawks. Yeah. Oh, what were you saying? I said he's flavor number 32. flavor number 32, yeah. Baskin Robbins. Robbins. No. Uh, Boring and plain. Well, yeah, no, he definitely. <laughs> that we, joke. I haven't heard. I haven't heard anything from him. Like when they talk to him, like when he's interviewed, but he does like. <laughs> I'm the white guy on the bench. Like he's That's right. Like, I'm that guy. Um, he reminds me of Brian Hill, who was an old. He was a. Remember that name? Yeah. Yeah, he was yeah. a Magic uh, coach. Just the, the pure look, out of the style. I have no real yeah. equivalency for, uh, but or basis of equivalency. But he, I don't know, he kind of is in over his head maybe a little. I don't know. Uh, Stevens has done all right. I also think he's frustrated with everyone. You can see it like I after, think he is too. You're yeah. seeing it. Yeah. And I, I think we all know the, the Celtics are more talented. But it's I, about the execution part of things. I would even argue that Milwaukee, you could say Milwaukee is more talented. You could. You could. I definitely could see that because they've definitely hit their spots when needed too. Yeah, and they have, I mean, their top two players, Middleton and uh, Giannis, uh, Akapotenko, I think. Yeah. I can never, yeah, I'll try. I'll say three different the Greek versions freak. of it. The Greek freak. The Greek freak. Who is, who, I mean, uh, game five, he wasn't, he actually he, didn't. He was invisible game yeah, five. I would argue that he didn't score as much, but he had, he had something like uh, double-digit assists. He made passes and he opened things up for people mm-hmm. uh, like uh, off the bench Muhammad, yeah. who had like 11 or 13 points, and in the third, got them back in that game. And I think game seven, I mean, it could go either way. I know, Nick, you and I were talking uh, off air, how, like, in the NBA, as well, I'll have you... Home court. Home court I think yeah. it's the number one thing out of all, like, baseball, all football, sports, yeah. hockey, and basketball. I think having home court is the biggest advantage towards potentially getting a win in a series. Players feed off the Especially game yeah, seven. Feed off of the Statistically, well, and I'm not imposed. trying to be it's the crazy. stat on geek. top of each other. Yeah. I was just saying, I don't want to be the stat geek here, the nerd, about stats with game sevens and stuff, but it's like a 70%, maybe a little bit higher percentage chance that you get the win if you're at home, so long as you play well. Yeah, no, and also, and on, on to Tom's point, like, everyone feeds off it. The refs feed off it, and that's it's true. I mean, sometimes, you know, NBA refs, as we all know, they're <laughs> just... Littered with scandal and it, they're like a joke. Uh, I would say like it's like 
maybe because of popularity, the NFL ref gets more crap than the NBA, but the NBA yep. should, ref should get more crap than the NFL yeah, ref. In my yeah. opinion, they're both equal. Oh, sure. Yeah, I'd, I'd buy that. No, but, I mean, I mean honestly, that, yeah. That, that's part of the reason why I don't even watch basketball, because <laughs> the, the, it, the ref, I'm, I watched game three, and I'm just, I was watching it with my grandfather, and he used to play basketball, he used to coach basketball, oh, cool. and he's like, that's a foul, that's a foul, <laughs> right, that's yeah. a foul, that's a foul, sure. they're not calling any of this stuff. No, they can be very inconsistent. I actually hate it when they do it the other way, when they call, like, every little thing. And it's just like, well, you're messing... I went to a game this year, yeah. when it, and uh, I was I was kind of a T.O. or P.O. because Kyrie wasn't playing and Marcus Smart wasn't playing. It was mm-hmm. one of those times where they were both kind of out. But it was a good game. And I think it was against... Um, not try- Oh, it was against... Not Indiana. Who was it? I forget who it was against. But um, there was, like, the flow of the game was all messed up because they kept yep. calling, like, foul every five... Uh, second. Don't you love when there's two minutes left in the game and it's actually 30? Yeah. Don't you love it? That's the NBA. That's uh, the NBA. But not, all, not every team had done it. And there was a time when it was like even in the 90s, it was even worse. Yeah. But uh, it seems like that's been coming back in the Hacka Shack uh, thing. That's oh, it's kind coming of, back. Yeah. Or the oh, Hacka yeah. DeAndre. Yep. And Hacka, who's the other? Um, oh, yeah. Because uh, DeAndre Jordan. It was DeAndre Jordan. And there's another, another fella. Pretty much big centers who have big, too big a hand to use the basketball and actually uh, shoot a, three, a free throw. Yep. Which the seeds actually, I will say this, uh, they're normally decent uh, free throw shooters, but it's been hurting them a bit, uh, their yep. lack of... Those are easy you know, points, and you got to get those. They call it the charity stripe for a reason. Yep. And yeah, you, you have get to get those. them. And Jalen Brown is uh, one of those defenders, too. Yep. He'll, like, he'll go one for two, or he'll, you know... It's not very good at the line. It's inconsistent. Surprisingly, inconsistent. not uh, yeah, incon- surprisingly incon- uh, inconsistent at and the line. And Milwaukee definitely picked up on that because I was watching yeah. Game Three and there were he they he uh, when I was watching it he got fouled I think three or four times and he missed at least one every yeah. single time. So yeah. And that was well, the game that got blown up by like twenty uh, something. Well, that they was got blown game... out, and then they almost came back and won. That's no, it's it's the same thing. Was that, that game happened. four? No, but game three, I agree, and this is actually a good point. Like in the third quarter, they made a good run, but they stalled out. And in yep. game four, they actually kind of, and even last night, they it's the same thing. They were down twelve in the third. Yep. And then in the fourth, they they cut it to like three or four. It was seventy eight, seventy five at one point in the fourth. Yep. And I will say like. Both defenses, both Milwaukee and the Celtics, but I'll give more credit to the Celtics because Giannis and Middleton um, and Bledsoe can be more explosive. That they, you know, you have games that are like eighty-seven to like you know seventy-eight or like mm-hmm. ninety to something, and Milwaukee is, can can score. So, but we'll see. I don't know. Sorry, I don't mean to cut through. No, that. no, no. I, I'm just thinking about what we're looking for for Game Seven. Are there any oh. keys to the game? Yeah. Uh, allow. It, it when Giannis, I don't know. I, he, I think he's more dangerous when he passes the ball around. Mm-hmm. I think if he doesn't, uh, but game five, you know, he passed the ball around a little more. He didn't score as much. And Yubaselli, I think, was on him. Yeah, I think so. Which I think was a fun move. I think it's yeah, get that like low centered like his backside is huge, and he's oh, like is. a weeble wobble. Yeah. And it's just kind of it's funny because he's there. <laughs> weeble wobble. He That's is, good. <laughs> but he's but he also can. <laughs> Dece- deceivingly move quickly and like he actually like I don't know he uses his ass for leverage and just like swivels off. Yeah. It's great and Use he's it for something. a pretty decent shooter and defender and he's like wide enough. And I love I don't know they 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 pick these guys right from the French league and they it's do. awesome and it's just kind of these weird European. It's very Spurs esque. Uh, they which just I pick enjoy. them right off the tree. Just right off. The yeah, here you go. Here you go. Come on. Come on, uh, another one. Kyrie, you're out. Come Steve on. will play. Let's do this. <laughs> Gordon's out. Um, Come on. Yeah. Well, oh, I was talking to my brother-in-law about the kind of craziness this season has been. You know, you don't have your Gordon Hayward. You don't. He, you don't have Kyrie. But just think about Tatum going to Tatum, who should be a big factor. In, I would like to think in Game 7, he shows up a bit more uh, being at home and just driving to Labasca. And there yep. were points last night, like the fourth quarter, there was a great uh, three-point play he had. Yep. Just drove to Labasca. I think, you know, he was he was thrusted into the season with like ninety seconds in, like, oh, by the way, kid, yeah. uh, you're in uh, right now. You're starting. Oh, who right. am I? Who am I defending? Oh, the, one of the greatest players ever. Right. You're just going to be defending the LeBron. Good learning lesson. Yeah. Hey, it's hit the ground, not just running, but just like rocket car speed. Well, imagine when for next season comes when you have Gordon and Kyrie and you have Tatum off the bench. 
and or something. You have a Tatum Morse uh, kind of combo and yeah. Terry Rozier if Terry's still around. If they yeah. don't trade him or which also, yeah, Terry's gonna uh, should come up big, and he's been pretty good. Um, he hasn't really. The only game he did really hasn't me. been. Any, really hasn't been a star. I know game one he was first two games he was first two good. games he was pretty good. So I would like to see some more consistency from him. I guess for game seven sure. of what we've seen, you know, time in and time out. So I do think the Celtics will pull out. I do think that they will get the win, and I think they will get to the next round and they'll be playing the Seventy uh, Sixers. What do you think about that series? I don't know about you guys, but I love it. I love this uh, old 80s kind of rehashing. Yep. Like we had uh, a decade ago, the Lakers and MCs with their banner 17. Yep. We have Philly, who people say are blooming faster than they thought they would. But, I mean, you know, these kids are ready to play. And Reddick, Well, they have they, Embiid, who's Embiid. the big star. They have Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons. They have uh, Alvin Gentry. Is Okafor a part of that? No. no. Uh, he was. He was. He they, was a part they, of that. He I tra- believe they traded, traded him off because yeah. they had no real, because, you know, he No, he didn't have a role for him. No. And uh, Redick. Yep. And the starting five is pretty good, and some of their bench is pretty decent, but they're, you know, they're they're a good team, and it's going to be a fun young matchup, and the seeds are going to have the advantage of having four games at home, but I don't, you know, we'll see what happens, and they yep. match up decently against them, but, you know, no Kyrie. Who did the, uh, the Sixers end up beating? Sorry. Oh, uh, no, Miami. With, Miami. Okay. Yeah. Wasn't a bad... They beat them in five or... I think it was five games. Five games. Yeah. Which, but, you know, Miami put up a fight of sorts, but Miami yeah. kind of wasn't... They're actually an interesting team, too. I think yep. they're fun to watch. Yep. Uh, with Whiteside and uh, Olenek, one of my favorite former Celtics, who also is another guy who... It, potential, as Bill Parcells would say. That filthy word, potential. Potential. It's never, yeah. Never uh, reaches that. But, yeah, I'm looking. I Actually, I could see the Celtics winning in six mm-hmm. against Philly. But I could see Philly, you know, just battling it out in seven. Again, were the Bucks a tougher, tougher matchup than Philly? Yeah, because I don't think uh, the Philly doesn't have a Giannis. Yeah. They don't have a Greek freak. And Embiid is good. And yep. he might be ragged, run ragged from this. And yeah. he, could be, he could get injured just walking to the stadium. Yeah, he's very right. injury prone, yeah. as we know. And him and Al, that'll be a good one. Him yep. and Al... Uh, but I don't know if Al will face him. I think it would be more of a Baines yep. thing. And I actually am, I want to see more Craig Monroe. I like Craig Monroe yep. a lot. Yep. And offensively, he's a great rebounder. Defensively, yep. he's a good rebounder. But offensively, he's a great rebounder. He can actually drive to the basket, yep. and he can handle the, the ball well. And he passes. He's pretty good. Now, I'm surprised we haven't seen him as much. Maybe he wasn't. Yeah, I, I, we haven't really seen him that much. Maybe he has more of a role. Maybe within this next series, if the yeah. Celtics can get our gears right now, we're going to go to the Boston Red Sox. My oh my, has this April been historic for this baseball team? Um, the Red Sox only have, I believe, five losses this month. Wow. They have 17 wins right now. 17 and five. Best start in franchise history right now. Um, we haven't been with you for a little bit, so we want to back it up to when the Red Sox started on the West Coast trip. West Coast trip, they were going to be facing off against uh, one of the best teams, they said, which was the Angels. Took care of that business, 100%. Yeah. They swept 23 them. 23 to, what was it? It was something crazy, like 23 It was to, crazy. I think yeah. each game averaged 10 runs. Oh, um, they blew them open they in the first game. They blew them away. Yeah. And that's the team that they said was supposed to be a really, really good opponent. M- Mookie hit three home runs in that yep. first game, right? Yep. Yeah, that's sure right. Did. Lead sure off did. home run, yeah. and yep. a closing home run, and... Yeah, a curtain call. Home run. <laughs> then so, yeah. the Red Sox face the Oakland Athletics on the Friday night game. That was when another grand slam oh. was hit. They have five grand slams on the season so far. And then disaster struck. They, oh, oh. <laughs> they got no hit on Saturday against a guy that I think is a journeyman who get everybody gets their luck. Yeah, gets sure, lucky everyone sometime. gets the night. Sean Manaya for yeah. the for against the uh, for the uh, the athletics. So much hate in your voice, so Liz. Yeah, over this. Manaya. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no hitting is just embarrassing. I mean, what do you think they help? From what I hear, I didn't catch the game that they helped out on a couple. You know, not to take anything away from. There them, were a but, couple calls that there yeah. was one play with Ben Intendi going down the line that uh, they said he was out of the base path with. I think he was more. Oh, weird. It was a, one of those weird kind of technicality yeah. calls. Eh. The Red Sox needed to come back from, um, from come back down to earth. And then though. they went to yeah, Toronto. I, and then from Toronto, the they took good. two out of three from uh, the Blue Jays. Red Sox come back home for a Friday night matchup against the Tampa Bay Rays. Mookie so that hit another, another leadoff home yeah. run three, the other night. 
that should be another three wins there. Yeah. Um, oh, poor Tampa Bay. Overall, the recap of it has been great. <laughs> really but Tampa Bay. let's go pauses, pauses and negatives towards the season right now. Let's start with, do you want to be negative first or want to be positive? Let's go negative. I like the negative. negative. Let's go negative. Okay, let's go negative. <laughs> yeah, I have a rant. I have yeah, a rant. No, why not? Okay, yeah, I'm going to rant show. away. Is it Jackie Bradley or Can Joe Can you Kelly? please <laughs> tell me why and how baseball reporters and media were able to bring, about, bring upon Andrew Benintendi as the next baseball superstar? Where, 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 where was that? Why was that determined that he was going to be like that? Because in my eyes right now, Benintendi is nothing but an average player. Nothing but an average player. You don't think he was, like, a decent... I think there was way too much hype about Andrew Benintendi. I think he was really good, like, last year before he got hurt. Like, he was really good. And that was last year's first true rookie season, or was it the year and before? It, it was, he came up, he had a... He had I think a he was, came up, too. like, be right before September. Yeah, that's right. You know, and he came up and he, you know, really started doing well there yeah. and hit the ball well. Last year was a pretty good season for him. Um, but again, pretty good season. He's in the 260 range for batting. We're, when did 260 become baseball superstar? We're only 20 games into the yeah, season. I mean, you can't you can't say anybody's a ba- next baseball superstar. Like you could, everybody was saying uh, what the the kid from the uh, from the Angels. Oh, oh Otani. Otani. Like, yeah. well, he's still been pretty. Don't decent, oh, folks, he's the next best thing. He 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 struck out all the Oakland Athletics. He's and wonderful. And Grand Slam. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, it's pretty nice. I am that you so have a sick player. and tired of people saying it. Let these guys play a little bit oh, before sure. we crown them the king and crown them all the next MVP. This, like, relax. Well, if people yeah. have, I mean, if, if you look at baseball back in, like, the 2000s, the late 90s, you had guys like Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire, A-Rod, Randy Johnson. All that media stuff goes to their head. If you, I mean, you, you look at A-Rod. A Rod was like, oh, he was the next best player back when he was playing for Texas and Seattle, and then he and then he starts falling apart because the media was just giving him all this attention and he couldn't handle it. It yeah. went to his head. What, what do you think about the so-called I, proclamation of these guys being superstars? It happens all the time, man. Yeah. I mean, it's the media. You know, it's Chinatown, baby. As yeah, they well, say, it's a, it's. I think they need something. All to talk the about. hype, all the hype in the world for some of these people, and you look at it like, really. He's 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 three hundred million dollars, really? He's this? Well, as 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 Jack Edwards would say, it seemed it, we the boss Boston is like the embarrassment of sports because well, embarrassment to other sports teams, I should say, I think is what he was trying the to embarrassment say. Embarrassment of all, riches, kind of. Thing. Yeah, embarrassment of riches with all the all the championships. So we have I so think, we, our expectations are sky high for each team. So I think sure. I think Boston media likes to blow things out of proportion. I mean, it was Felger that said before the season or. Even uh, during at the beginning of the hockey season, that the Bruins team was too young, they weren't going to make it. They weren't going to. Why go did he far. do that? Do you know why he did that? Just get a rise out of people. He gets a rise out of people and gets ratings. Well, that's part that's of how it, yeah. he does it. But I mean, he doesn't really believe that in his head. But because of what I think he there are says, elements of it. I, I, I think you because never, of what I mean, he yeah, says, I think he's able to get a charge out of people, so we'll watch and we'll hate them. I think that's more conspiratory than. But I don't think he does. Reality, I think. But. I think if he wanted to get a rise out of people, he would make it less believable. I think there are some aspects to his thinking that he actually does truly believe that the Bruins weren't going to get far. Yeah. Because you wouldn't say something like that if you didn't have some sort of belief that it was actually going to happen. Yeah, I think he had come back to, you know, he was, you know, obviously wrong about it. He was like... Clearly. Yeah, well, no, yeah, sure. <laughs> but he was Tony Maus is yeah. the same way. He didn't pick he the Bruins be. at all. He thought they were going to lose in six games or whatever oh, really? it was. Yeah. Sometimes I really do believe it's scripted television or scripted well, I radio. Know. I mean, they, well, they, it's a process of which they go through, like, what are we going to talk about today? What are we doing? I mean, yeah, it's scripted to degrees, but they're still also there talking and having their opinions. They, want, they need to put their opinion out there. And I also don't think it's always a great thing to have the same, like us, if we had all of the same opinions on certain things, what a boring show this would be. I think it's great that people have different opinions because you can get a different perspective on stuff. Well, I don't agree with it. Oh. <laughs> just, well, just to keep in tow with the show. <laughs> yeah. Blank you! Yeah. Um, so that's, that's what I think is great about having different conversations and different angles to look at certain things from. Except you may not agree. 
Except for the last show where Phil, you know, just copied everything. But you're I respectful said about about yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Listen, pretty much. <laughs> copying copy and paste, yes. Um, so that's my my angle on the Ben and Tendi thing. Ben and Tendi's having a terrible season right now. Yes, it's April. I get it. He could come out and be gangbusters in May, in June, and I hope that that happens. But right now, Mookie Betts if is I were the manager star. of the Red Sox, if I were Alex Cora, Ben and Tendi would be taking the express train right down to AAA. Wow, really? To learn how to play the game the right way. Didn't you just criticize Felger for making like <laughs> I did like an over the top? I did. Like... So I'm gonna make an over the top statement <laughs> right, right there. Well, here we go. Well then, who would he you? He needs to learn also how to run the yeah. bases. It's yeah. been eight times now counting that he has been thrown out from stupidity on the base. He got picked off second base last wow. night. How do you get picked off second base as a major league baseball player? When is the running drunk. brigade for these Red Sox <laughs> going to stop? Like, they need a lasso around them or an anchor. Yeah. Because we saw it, um, uh, Wednesday, was it Wednesday night? No, Tuesday night. Brock Holt gets the game-tying hit in the bottom of the ninth inning, or top of the ninth inning, rather, two outs, and zippity doo head over at third base decides to send Nunez with a bad knee in and gets thrown up by 20 feet. There you go. Aggressive base running. <laughs> okay, John Farrell. <laughs> We're going to be aggressive and stupid on the bases. Oh, yeah, there's that a difference That same between, philosophy yeah. is continuing, and it's got to stop. They Did look they like team ballers out there. Did they mitigate it at all? Like, is it like, I thought it was no, no, nothing. No. It's been the same crap over and over again. Yeah. We've even seen Mookie get thrown out and get picked off on bases this season. All right, but here's my question. If you took Ben and Tenney and threw him down into AAA, like you say, who would you put in for him? Right now, I, as much as some people don't like it, I put J.D. Martinez out in the outfield, and I put Mitch Moreland to first base. Moreland is swinging a great bat and deserves to be playing first base. And I have ne- really not been a more, big Moreland guy. But if Moreland's going to hit the ball and play like he's doing, he deserves the playing time like over somebody whose good. head's up their butt. Yeah, and he got a contract this offseason, right? Yep. Pretty much it's... Too much to be just sitting on the bench. And I've tur- I've, it's amazing. I've turned my page to Ben Benintendi over Bradley. I- I've expected Bradley to just stink from now on. I've just but expected it. Been, ben Benintendi had like a hot streak. Like he started out cold, then he had like a he series of games. He hasn't done anything. I thought he had a series of games that he nope. was hitting decently. He had nope. like four doubles in three games maybe. Oh. Nope. Well, that, I mean, that's still pretty decent. For he that. had a great spring training, and he's yeah. just been cold well, as it's, ice. Uh, what is it? It's 20. It, he's it's just cold month. as ice. We'll see. Oh, he's singing Foreigner now? Yeah. All, right. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> Paradise. Uh, don't do it. We don't have the rights. No. <laughs> we can't. Um, yeah. I don't really have huh? any, other, any, other, any other gripes to, think, to, to look at. The catching position hasn't been great hitting-wise. No. I think it's time for Swihart to get his glove on behind there, but Core doesn't want to do that. Cora does not want to have Swihart catch. And I'm saying to myself, why? How worse can he do compared to the other two that are behind the plate? Because the Vasquez and... Vasquez is not hitting at all. He's hitting 150. Oh. Leon's hitting like .90. Thanks. Well, Leon, we... Leon we knew... needs to take the express train back to the... We knew... Another we knew, land to catch. We knew Leon, his last year, last season was a fluke because he it was... It wasn't even... It was two seasons ago. Oh, was it, was it two we seasons are so ago? living in the past right now. <laughs> sure. We need the Foreigner theme song to be playing for some of these guys right now. They're as cold as ice, some yeah. of them. But on the other hand, we have some guys that are hot as a pistol. And now let's turn to the positive because that's something that should be focused on more. They're having a great season. But because we're Boston sports fans, we like to look at the negative more a little bit. The positive spin on things is Mookie Betts is having a wonderful start to the season. Wonderful. We He's been, I think he's got eight home runs already on the season, hitting like 350, leading off, being dominant. We see a different approach with Mookie. He's not taking as many pitches. If he sees the ball, that's spot on right down the middle or put right in the spot that's needed in his wheelhouse, he's hitting it, and he's hitting it out of the park. So that approach has definitely changed for him. Another positive is you look at the starting rotation. Mitchie too bad, right? The starting yeah. rotation has been awesome. The most, I think, runs they've given up is about four, and that was the David Price, my hand is cold game. Yeah. But overall, the starting pitching, we've seen great performances from them. So tip your cap to them on that. Um, and then we've also had good performances from guys like Brock Holt, Mitch Moreland, 
Uh, Xander Bogarts, who will be coming back from the disabled list on Friday night, which is great. He had a great beginning to the start of the season here. Um, those are positive things. Pedroia should be back shortly, too. Um, I know I've said on this show before that I think the little leader hasn't been as great as um, he should be with some things on how his leadership is. But I do have to say his glove is missed at second base. They need his glove back there. So what do you guys think on that? Anything else to look at from the Sox? Well, I mean, the question is, is Mookie having another MVP caliber season? Yes. Is it looking right now, like yes. he's going to? Is it looking yes. like he's... Um, and Xander coming back, that's another good sign. Hopefully he can get his hot bat going again. Yep. Um, Pedroia's glove desperately needed at desperately. second base because Nunez does not have has, the range. He doesn't have the range. <clears throat> nope. And, have as, range. and as injury prone as Pedroia is, he just somehow miraculously he always seems to pick off the ball and make a play. I'll even take Pedroia hitting 275, 280, and if he's playing gold glove oh. caliber second base, Phenomenal. All he needs to do is hit the hit the ball and get some running runs yeah. in. That's all he needs to do. We don't need any more laser show. We don't need big hits from him no. anymore. We got mm. Mitch Moreland hitting doubles. We got Mookie hitting home runs. We got Xander hitting getting him on JD the base. JD Martinez is hitting the ball well. Finally hitting again. the ball when Hanley's Hanley's mo Hanley's great. motivated. Hanley's He'll having a great season, I, and I'm sorry I haven't said that. No, Hanley's, I, I enjoy him a lot. Just what a great season he's had. His upside is always more, yep. it's worth it. Yeah. it. Whatever you have to do yeah, with A it. motivated Hanley is a great Hanley. Yeah. Anything and else that we want to talk about from the Sox? I just hope they sign Mookie. At one <laughs> That's point, the one player that best, needs to yeah. stay. What's he worth? I, I mean, he's worth big money. He is. I mean, whether you Seven years, $250 million? I mean, is anyone worth that? But no. I mean... I mean, whatever. If Stanton's thirteen years, three twenty-five, and he strikes oh. out every game. Well, but he'll, but it'll all equal out. Like the, you know, the tide will, you know. I uh, don't think Mookie's the level. kind of player that's gonna want to take big money if he doesn't have to. If the, he feels that he's getting what he what he wants and needs, then he'll take it. I feel really? like. Out of all, I the think he's already kind of. At well, the table, he, scoffed at... He's already scoffed at contract extension, yeah. so he's shooting for the big bucks. I think he's, yeah. As much as I'd like to, I mean, I'd like to think he would be... I, I want to keep Bogarts, and I want to keep Betts. Is that logical? It is, but then you're probably not keeping Chris Sale. Chris Sale is also going to be up. Pomerantz oh, yeah, up at after the end of this year. year, right? Yep. Kimbrell's up. There's a lot of players well, whose time is coming up. In a heartbeat, I'd get rid of Kimbrell. You would get rid of Kimbrell? Well, I... Listen, he's great. He can be great during the regular season. But he has, like, you can just see it or just you feel it. You just, there's a, a, a the ether. And he will not pitch anything else besides of a save opportunity. Just, he's stubborn. Oh, yeah, that's right. Very but also, stubborn. like, the playoffs, he's been kind of shaky. Yep. And he's high pressure situations, it seems like it's not his, his bag. Yep. But, you know, he's a great regular season. Well, like, the Red Sox have always seemed to, they, they've had great closes in the past, and they've always seemed to find somebody that can close out games for them yeah. mm -hmm. after. Um, this year, the bullpen's been still a little shaky. Has but... Carson Smith kind of leveled out a bit? Or is nope. He still kind of right? <laughs> yeah, because he was at the beginning, he was kind of uh, Phil, kind your of eighth radical. inning guy right now because Kelly's suspended is Matt Barnes. Matt Barnes did the job last night, yeah. but... Matt How Barnes is continue? Matt Barnes is the guy right now. He is mm. he is the best reliever in the bullpen for the Red Sox right mm. now. And Outside of Kimbrel. Last thing we want to mention before we go off into the sunset is the Patriots. They had their draft this week as well. We want to break down at least round one for you, so you have a little bit of knowledge on who the two players are that the Patriots drafted. So the Patriots had the twenty three and the thirty first pick in the in the draft for um, this week. At 23, they drafted Isaiah Wynn. That's a guard who's out of Georgia. They also stuck with Georgia yeah. for pick number 31. Some people thought it was going to be a trade or it might be a quarterback, which could have been Lamar Jackson. Could have but been. it was not. That pick was Sonny Mitchell. Okay, Sonny Mitchell is a running back um, for Georgia. Two excellent picks, I must say. Very under-the-radar picks, but two picks, in my opinion, that make one person on the Patriots particularly very happy. Josh McDaniel. Josh McDaniels yeah. and Tom Brady. So the Isaiah Wynn guy, they're looking at him to be the replacement for Soldier. All right, for Nate Soldier, who is a longtime Patriot. 
They're going to look to shift him to tackle, which I don't think should be too much of a struggle because he's played there from before. And then uh, the Sonny Michelle pick, that's looking like the Dion Lewis replacement right there. Um, the only concern that's there was about this guy was, I guess he's had some knee issues from before, but oh, according to reports, Sonny his Mitchell. knee uh, looks strong enough, and it looks like that he'll be uh, fine to you know, be a good part of the Patriots' offense here. Um, what are your thoughts on them? Well, I heard uh, about the, the guard, Isaiah is the guard. Yep, Isaiah, Isaiah Wynn. Isaiah Wynn. Oh, that's a cool name. Yep. Um, Likes to win. Yeah, uh, but yeah, they're both from Georgia. I found it was kind of fun. Both Georgia Bulldogs. And Isaiah, I believe he was a gu he's more of a guard. Yep. And uh, he's 6'2", little, doesn't have the reach, yep. they were saying, as much, but he's versatile, yep. and you can put him wherever. So, yep. I mean, that was kind of the thing. They were, It was a, a decent pick, and that was something... I mean, obviously, and we had talked about it, and other people had talked about that's what they needed. Yep. And the two picks were very Patriots picks. Cause very Patriot-esque no, picks. Yeah, exactly. Not very flashy, which we always do this to ourselves as fans. Yep. We want some sort of weird, like, not weird, but, you know, there's some, oh, there's a trade happening. Or, you know, we're going to, they're going to pick, you know, two quarterbacks in the first round or something outlandish. Like, no, they're going to get what they need, and they're going to do the most boring thing. Yep. Yep. Uh, but, yeah, I Sonny Mitchell, um, looking forward. To that, they also talked about possibly ball, uh, ball control issues, but yep. supposedly he got better at that. Got better at that, yep. I guess and he just scored 16 touchdowns last year with Georgia. Oh, wow. So he's got a good resume on there. Well, where, yeah. have, where haven't we had a running back that's had ball handling issues? I it's, mean, yeah, it's a good point. Uh, Michelle was the first uh, running back picked in the draft by the Patriots since Lawrence Maroney, the I law firm. I read that in yep. uh, 2000. Yep. That was a no, 2006. No, the law firm was Ben Jarvis. Oh, that's right. He, that was the, yeah. uh, he was the law firm, so... Uh, Lawrence Maroney was a different, different pick, different player. But not that a was bad, 06, yeah. Not a bad uh, running back, and he actually, the fact that they went to him more or didn't go to him as much in that Super Bowl in 2007, and yep. kind of what killed him a little bit. Yep. Yep. But uh, uh, what are your thoughts on it? What I like about it is, you got two guys from a southern school where they know nothing. They know more about football than. And most other like schools up they here, have a good out football west. IQ. Yeah, the 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 schools down in the south love their football. Yep. And that's something that you see anywhere. A lot of passion. Where it's there, from, right? if it's anywhere in Texas. Hate their education. To, uh, they love their football. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it, how uh, another thing I like it is like you said, it's an under rate under the radar uh, pick, um, which is something that Bill Belichick always does, and yep. somehow miraculously turns it into a, gold. Some yeah. He, he's got the minus touch. It does. They need it because those those were big positions that needed to be filled. I was hoping for a linebacker, honestly, yep. but I mean, that's we'll see. All, now, second that's round, my though. other second shift. Second round. The second round comes, and we still have more picks into into that avenue how many, as it's well. Like four, oh no, how many second rounds? I think we like have two, two second rounds, nothing for the third, and then a fourth. Oh, okay. I think something like that. All right. But we may actually, you know what? No. We have two second rounds, one third, one fourth. Oh, okay. They have to fill some defensive needs now. They have to because that single-handedly was, in my eyes, the biggest concern entering the draft. Yeah. They have to fill slots. They have no more Malcolm Mitchell. Uh, not Malcolm. Malcolm Brown. Malcolm. No, no. No, no, no. Malcolm Butler. Malcolm Butler. One Thank of the Malcolms. You. How many Malcolms you get? No, we need no. another linebacker. And as another you Malcolm because. We're down on Malcolm. We're so down we on to... Malcolm. <laughs> We're down on Malcolm. Malcolm we quota Malcolm. has to be up. Malcolm X will come and join us. Yeah. Um, they also should be looking at uh, another safety. We do have, of course, Devin McCourty back there and Jason McCourty, both you yeah. know, the brothers back there is a good tan, uh, good uh, matchup there. But I think they need some I – I think, I think it would be a good idea to draft somebody that can help alleviate – any kind of maybe exceeded pressure that somebody might have in slotting into something. So more depth, yeah. more depth basically there. Um, I also don't think it's too crazy to also start looking to see if they can find a kicker as well because oh. Kostowski has been pretty shaky, all right, as we've continued on from stuff. He had a decent season, but I think it would be, I think it would be dumb to go in without having somebody as a threat to Kostowski. He's been there for almost, actually, he's been there for 12 seasons since 2006. Wow. So he's, mm. like, as we know, kickers can last forever. Adam Vinatieri is going to be 
fifty years old. Oh my I believe. god! Yeah, that's right. He's still he's still kicking still around, metaphorically the, kicking. He's yeah. still doing it, um, and literally kicking. But I think that it might be an <laughs> option to look. You know, I'm not saying go high on it, but keep your options. No, open. you got a fourth round pick, and you don't. I mean, I would I would rather they just pick up some Jamok from MLS or. Probably something else. They yeah. might because they've got rugby players on the team and lacrosse yeah. players and, and stuff. So like Evan, Belichick, yeah. I'm sure, will come up with some sort of special potion. Yeah. Do, do they draft a quarterback? Uh, if I Shouldn't were going to draft know? a quarterback, Shouldn't I would have taken Lamar Jackson right now. Yeah. After that, no. Well, you got two no. second rounders. But no. But well, what, I, I would need something. But here's you here's, here's, here's you got Hoyer. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> who do you, who's your project? You got Hoyer. Who's your project? Giselle. Oh my lord! She, but okay, strap her in. She's good to go. Yeah. So when Tom Brady was was the, good backhand, the draft the yeah, draft sure. that Brady was in, were you saying were you thinking, oh yeah, they should have gotten this guy instead of waiting until? You never know, you never know, and that's the that's the thing with it. Um, I I, I like the picks that they made from last night. I still wouldn't have done Lamar Jackson. I kept saying to myself, you know, he's there. You can take him. We got picked, yeah, right before. It the was 30. 32 he was 30. picked. He was the last pick in the first round. He Wait, no, he wasn't the last, but he was picked right before. Because what were the, the Pats? They were... Pats were 31. 31. No, I thought it was 30 he was picked. No. It was no, the other. No, he oh, was 32. Oh, oh he, he was, was picked 32. right after him. Oh, he I'm was sorry. picked. It was going to be the Eagles pick, and the Eagles traded with Baltimore. So Baltimore ah, had okay. two picks in the first round. Oh, that makes sense. So that's... You know, Flacco's got pressure what did, now. What did they um what I did think they Lamar trade? Jackson has more talent than uh, Joe Flacco. But they okay. traded uh Philly, Philly traded down to yeah. get um, a future pick in the next round draft, and I think in the second round and the third round. Okay. So overall I think it was a good night for the Patriots. Um, more more draft coverage will continue this weekend to see if they can fill some more holes in their roster. Yeah. Um, before we wrap up the show, we do want to uh, mention that we do have a Sports Zone Question of the Week. Our Sports Zone Question of the Week. We forgot about that from the last show. Our yes, Question of the Week is going to be, will the Bruins advance to the next round against the Tampa Bay Lightning? If you think yes, vote yes. If you think no, vote no. Where do they vote? Uh, they can go on our Facebook page and Twitter. Our Facebook, Twitter poll of the question. week. That's a great question. <laughs> yeah. Facebook, Twitter poll of the week. That'll be up this week for you to vote and see if you can be a winner from selecting yes or no. Any other things that we need to mention before we wrap up? Face the facts. Uh, go, go Celtics. Go, go Bruins. Go Red Sox. Go Patriots. We hope you all have continued success with all the different things going on for you in the next week with drafts, with games, and, you know, even game sevens or playoff continuing coverage. We will see you next time here on Face to Facts for Nick Face. I'm Phil Healy. I'm Tom Smith. We will see you next time for another episode. See you later.